Now, let's try to identify the parts of the hyperbola given its equation. So, first, let's have x plus 6 squared over 36 minus y plus 3 squared over 64 equals 1. So, first thing that we have to know is to identify the orientation of our hyperbola. So, by looking at the equation, as you can see, x comes first, or it is positive. So, that's why we know that it is hyperbola with horizontal transverse axis. Now, after that, we can also get from the equation the values of a squared and b squared. So, a squared is equal to 36. It's always the first denominator. And then, b squared is 64. And from here, we can identify the values of a and b. So, a is equal to 6 and b is equal to 8. Okay? After that, we can now solve for c. So, since what we need are a, b, and c, and also the h, k, so we have to solve for c. Remember what I've said a while ago that a, b, and c follows a certain relationship, which is a squared plus b squared equals c squared. So, we can use this to identify the value of c. So, to solve for c, we have a, which is 6. We have b, which is 8. So, we can write c squared equals... Then we have 6 squared plus 8 squared. So c squared equals 36 plus 64. c squared is equal to 100. Get the square root of both sides. So c is equal to 10. Now that we have the values of a, which is 6. We also have B, which is 8. We also have C, which is 10. Now, let's try to identify now the center so that we can have the HK. So, center. So, for the center, we know that this is HK. So, by looking at the equation, X is with H and Y is with K. So, by looking at the equation, H is with X and K is with Y. So, we have negative 6 for h, and for our k, negative 3. So, now we have h, k, a, b, and c. We can now solve for the other parts. Let's start with the vertices. Since it is a hyperbola with horizontal transverse axis, then the vertices can be solved or identified using h plus minus a, k. So, that means we're adding and subtracting a units to h. So, this will be negative 6, so that is our h, plus minus a is 6, then k is negative 3. So, simplify this. So, the first vertices that we have is we have negative 6 plus 6, so that is just 0. And then, copy negative 3. So, this is the first one. Second, negative 6 minus 6, that is negative 12. And then we have negative 3. So these are the location of our vertices. After that, we can now solve for the covertices. Again, covertices, these are the endpoints of our conjugate axis. And we can solve this using h, k, plus, minus, b. So we have h, which is negative 6 k is negative 3 plus minus b is 8. So, for the first one, we have negative 6. Negative 3 plus 8 is 5. And for the second one, we have negative 6. Negative 3 minus 8 is negative 11. So, these are the coordinates that represents the location of our covertices. Now, after solving the covertices, we can now identify the location of the foci. So, since the transverse axis is horizontal, so we will use H plus minus C, K. 
So substitute h is negative 6 plus minus c which is 10 and k is negative 3. And then simplify this. We have negative 6 plus 10 that is positive 4. Then negative 3. And second, we have negative 6 minus 10 is negative 16. Then negative 3. So these are the coordinates that represents the location of our foci. Last is for us to solve for the asymptotes. So for the asymptotes, we will be using the formula y equals k plus minus b over a times x minus h. So let's substitute k is negative 3 plus minus b is 8, a is 6 times x minus then h is 6, negative 6. So this will become positive 6. Simplify this one first. y equals negative 3 plus minus. Then this one is 8 over 6. x. 8 over 6 times 6 is 8. And then we can simplify the fraction. y equals negative 3 plus minus. Then this one is uh, 4 over 3. x plus 8. And then let's solve it separately. So add and subtract. So we have y equals negative 3 plus 4 over 3x plus 8. And then the other one is y equals negative 3 minus 4 over 3x plus 8. For the first one, y equals, so we'll just copy 4 thirds. So 4 over 3x. Negative 3 plus 8 is positive 5. So this is the first equation of our asymptotes. For the second one, y equals, so you can distribute the negative sign. So you can have y equals negative 3 minus 4 thirds x minus 8. Simplify y equals negative 4 over 3x. Now negative 3 minus 8 is negative 11. So this is the equation of our asymptotes. Now that we already have the parts, so we can now graph. So let's use the Desmos in order to graph the given hyperbola. So now in graphing our hyperbola, so we will just use the Desmos and then let's um, enter here the parts that we obtain. So let's start with the equation that is x plus 6. squared over 36 minus y plus 3 squared over 64 equals 1. So this is our hyperbola. So as you can see, the curves opens to left and right. Okay, so let's identify now the center. So for the center, negative 6, negative 3. So there you go. So that is our center. Now let's plot the vertices. So we have 0, negative 3. Then the other one is negative 12, negative 3. So these are the vertices. Then let's have the co-vertices. We have negative 6, 5. And the other one is negative 6, 11 negative 11 after that let's plot also the foci so we have 4 negative 3 the other one is negative 16 negative 3 and lastly let's try to plot here the asymptotes we have y equals 4 thirds x plus 5 and the other one is y equals negative 4 thirds minus 11. So again, as you can see, these are the asymptotes. And as you notice, the intersection of the two asymptotes is the center. So that means our answers are correct.
Okay, so this is again the graph of the given hyperbola. You have the center. This curves right here is our hyperbola. Center, we have the two vertices, the foci, the co-vertices, and our asymptotes. Another example, let's uh, try to identify the parts of 7 of y minus 7 squared over 9 minus x minus 4 squared over 16 equals 1. So let's identify the orientation. Since the first variable here is y and it is positive, that means it is a hyperbola with vertical transverse axis. And from the equation also, we can identify a squared, which is 9, and b squared, which is 16. Therefore, a is a 3 and b is equal to 4. Now that you already have a and b, we can now solve for c. So to solve for c, we can use the formula square root of a squared plus b squared. So a squared is 9, b squared is 16. Then we have c equals square root of 25, c equals 5. So this is our values, a is 3, b is 4, c is 5. After that, let's now identify the center from our equation. So, h is with x and k is with y. So, we have 4, 7 as our center. So, this is our h, this is k. Next, let's solve for the vertices. So, for the vertices, since it has a vertical transverse axis, so we will be using the formula h and then k plus minus a so we have h is 4 our k is 7 plus minus a is 3 and then let's simplify this for the first one we have 4 7 plus 3 is 10 next we have 4 7 minus 3 is 4 so we now have the location of our vertices. For the co-vertices, we will be using h plus minus b k. So h is 4 plus minus b which is 4 and then k is 7. So solve them separately. We have 4 plus 4 which is 8 and then 7 Second is we have 4 minus 4 which is 0 and 7 as well. So these are the locations of our co-vertices. Next, we can now identify the location of the foci. Since it has a vertical transverse axis, it follows the form h, k plus minus c. So we have h is 4, k is 7, plus minus c which is 5 solve them separately we have 4 7 plus 5 is 12 and then second we have 4 7 minus 5 is 2 so these are the locations of our foci after that let's solve now for the asymptotes so the formula that we will be using is y equals k plus minus then we have a over b times x minus h so y equals then k is 7 plus minus a is 3 over b which is 4 then x minus h which is 4 so we have y equals 7 plus minus then let's multiply this 3 fourths x minus 3 fourths times 4 is just 3. And then let's solve them separately. So we have y equals 7 plus 3 fourths x minus 3. And then the other one is y equals 7 minus 
3 fourths x minus 3. So this one, y equals, so we have 3 fourths x. Then 7 plus negative 3. 7 plus negative 3 is just positive 4. So this is our first asymptote. For the second one, y equals, you distribute the negative sign, 7 minus 3 fourth x. Then negative negative, this will become positive 3. So we have y equals negative 3 fourths x. Then 7 plus 3, we have positive 10. So this is the other asymptotes. So now that we already have the parts, we can now graph. Now for the graph, so we're using again the Desmos and then let's plot here the equation. So we have y minus 7 squared over 9 minus x minus 4 squared over 16 equals 1. So there you go. This is our hyperbola. So as you can see, the curves opens upward and downward okay so let's now plot the points or the parts of our hyperbola center we have four seven for the vertices we have four ten and the other one is four four Next is we have the co-vertices. We have 8, 7. And the other one is 0, 7. For the foci, we have 4, 12. And the other one is 4, 2. And last for the asymptotes, we have y equals 3 over 4x plus 4 and y equals negative 3 over 4x plus 10. So as you can see, again we have the asymptotes and their intersection is at the center. So this is our graph. So we have the hyperbola, the asymptotes, center, this one, the vertices, co-vertices, and the foci. So that's it for today. I hope you learned something about hyperbola, how to graph it, what are the parts, how to solve for the parts and also the equations. And see you next time.